Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and I'm going to walk you through the assembly of the Apprentice Rocket Kit. Now, this is a really good kit for kids because it has these plastic fins. And the reason plastic is good for a first flight is because the fins are perfectly straight. They're not going to cause the rocket to deviate um, and cause an unstable flight. So you're going to get a really good flight out of this kind of rocket. Um, now, this is a very simple kit to build, uh, but I will walk you through it um, and show you some of the tips that uh, I use personally. So first of all, we're uh, step one in the instructions, and I'll refer to those. Um, I'm going to skip around a little bit, so don't get too upset. But step one is to glue the uh, shoulder into the nose cone like this. And for this type of step, you want to use a plastic model cement. Uh, this is from testers. It's a non-toxic uh, model cement. This will work fine. If you don't have model cement, super glue will do too. Um, and if you use super glue, try to get um, a gel um, because you don't want to get uh, liquid because liquid can splash into your eye and that's the worst thing. You can get it on your skin and it will bond instantly with, onto your skin. If you're using this with kids, be very careful. Typically, I recommend the uh, plastic model cement. So to use this, uh, just take the cover off um, and it usually likes to come out of the bottle pretty fast kind of like toothpaste, you know, once you squeeze it, you know, there's no getting it back in. So just get the cover back on as quick as possible. Um, I also like to take a little bit and kind of get it on that inside edge there so that I have both glue on that part and on this. And then just slide them together, kind of give them a little twist. Um, any glue oozes out, just take a paper towel and wipe that off. Okay, so that is the nose cone, and we're just going to let that sit to dry, and that's going to take a few hours to dry. Um, now here is where I'm going to deviate. Um, in the rocket kit, as you can see, we got pre-molded yellow fins and a black body tube. Now the tube that comes in your kit is uh, cardboard, um, and it's not painted. So um, I recommend painting it first before you assemble it, because then you don't have to mask anything off later. Um, and then, so if you want to match the color scheme that we have here, go ahead and paint this first. Uh, but before you do have to paint it, you have to install the launch lug. Um, see here on the side of the rocket is the launch lug. The purpose of the launch lug is, um, and we'll show you this later, is to guide the rocket while it's um, traveling at slow speeds. And we're going to sit it on a launch pad, um, and so that when it takes off, it's going in the direction that we want it to go. So gluing the launch lug is shown in step seven. And you're gonna to need to first draw a line along the tube. And I use an aluminum angle like this. If you don't have something like this, you can stick it into a door jam, you know, those corners of the door. Just stick it in there so you have a nice straight edge along the tube. And then we're gonna use a pencil. Now I'm using a Sharpie here because it shows up better in video. But always use a pencil whenever you're marking a tube because um, the solvents in the paint will dissolve the ink and then the ink will float up on top of your paint. With pencil, you don't have to worry about that. So always use a pencil. So first, go ahead and just draw that line along the tube. It doesn't have to go all the way because our launch lug is going to go near the bottom. And then we're going to take a ruler and in the instructions it says measure an inch and a half from one end. So here's my ruler and here's an inch and a half. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark it at, at an inch and a half right there. Since we're gluing paper to paper, we want to use uh, wood glue or, or white glue. Um, I'm using a wood glue. Um, I like this brand here. You always look for a wood glue that says weatherproof because once the glue is dry, if it's exposed to moisture like laying out in wet grass, um, the glue is not going to soften on you. So that's, that's a little tip. Um, so go ahead and just squeeze a little bit of glue onto that launch lug. and just kind of smooth it out. Have some paper towels ready. Now this uh, launch lug is going to be glued right here along that line. And you 
want to make sure that it's perfectly straight along the line. And if you didn't use too much glue, it, sh it should just hold by itself. If you use too much glue, it's going to fall off. That's another tip. Just don't use a lot of glue, glue on the launch lug on. So we're just going to set this aside and then once the glue is dry, we can go ahead and paint it. Um, and so then when it's painted, it's going to look like this. We're not going to cover too much on painting in this video, um, but we do have videos on our website that do show a little bit of painting. Um, so go ahead and watch those if you need help on painting. All right, so that's dried. Um, so now we're going to go back to assembling the, um, the motor mount. The motor mount is what holds the rocket engine into the rocket. So like this is a rocket engine. Um, I've already fired this one, which is why it's black on the bottom. But basically what happens is you'll put the motor in and it gets latched into that hook and it prevents it from either going forward or coming out the back. So that is the purpose of the engine mount. Um, it's made up of a couple of parts. You have the white paper tube, you have the engine hook, um, and you have two green centering rings and a blue centering ring. And then the first step is to mark the tube two and a quarter inches from the rear. So whatever we're marked from the rear, this, you know, this is going to be the rear, so I'll just put an R by it. That means rear, rear of the tube. And I want to go two and a quarter inches up from the bottom. So right there. And at that point, I want to cut a one eighth inch wide slot. You don't have to be exact, but um, one eighth inch wide is the width of this uh, metal hook. So this is the part where you're going to have to use a hobby knife. Um, and this, again, this is going to be, you want to, if you're around kids, you want to be very careful. Um, you know, guide the kids in this step. But basically, I just take the knife and I just plunge it into the tube like that. So it's a pretty simple step. And basically, what you want is that this end of the hook goes into that slot we just cut. There it goes. Okay, just like that. All right. And then we're going to take a long strip of masking tape, like it says in the instructions, and find the middle. Um, this has a slight bend to it. That's good. Um, that slight bend actually helps. Um, so, so just take it and wrap that masking tape around several times. And basically the purpose of this tape is just to keep that metal hook from sliding back and forth. Okay, and then I take my fingernails and I, I smoosh down the tape right along the edges so that it's, it's nice and tight in there. And it should be able to bend upwards. Um, don't bend it too hard, because if you, if you bend it too hard, you're gonna bend the metal and then um, it's not gonna hold the motor securely. At that point, just like that. So that's good. All right. Now we're going to take this blue ring, we're going to take this and we're going to glue it on the inside of this tube. So I'm going to take my wood glue again because we're gluing paper to paper. It doesn't take much. You see, I got, I got plenty in there. See, Debbie, you can bring a dowel. But you usually take a wood dowel or the back of a pencil and you can just smear it around in there like that. Then we're going to take the blue ring and just slide it in and it's going to remember that part that went into the tube it's going to slide right up against there and i can push it in with my finger um, sometimes when you're pushing it in it gets kind of cocked in there um, a little tip i do with my rocket motor is you can take a rocket motor and push it in there flush and the rocket motor will will make it nice and flush in there just like that Okay, now um, our next step, the, glue ring, uh, the blue ring is already glued in. The next step is we need to cut another notch into, into one of the green rings. And this is, again, this is where we're going to use a hobby knife. Um, if you're working with kids, I would recommend the adult do this step. This is the hardest step in the whole process is just cutting this ring because it's, it's big and fat. Um, you can see I take my fingers, I put them on each side so that I don't, I'm not going to poke myself and then just use a short sawing action to cut through there. 
um, and I need to make it as wide as that metal hook. So I need to make two of them. Okay, so there's the piece I cut out and I got a little notch in there. And that notch is going to go right here. And this ring gets glued right on the end of this white tube. So I put some glue on there. I'm going to smear it around with my finger. Take the excess, put it on the inside of the ring. And smear it around. Now if your ring, this is made up of multiple layers of paper, this green ring. And if your, your paper starts to delaminate, so like half of it's coming apart, I'll, I'll just pry it open to show you what it looks like. See, like that. If you're, if you're cutting with a dull blade, that's typically what happens, and that's your, your key to know that you need to change your knife blade out. But if that happens to you, uh, just take a little bit of the, the wood glue and just smear it in there. Basically, we're just gluing it back together, just like that. Okay, no harm, no foul, you know. Don't, don't get upset if things don't go perfectly the first time. We can fix things. If you ever have problems, just give us a call here at Apogee Components. You know our website. Um, it's www.apogeerockets.com. Okay, so we're just going to glue that green ring onto the end of the tube so that the engine hook can go up and down like that. All right, so now typically I would allow this to dry, but I'm a little pressed for time here, so I'm going to go ahead and go forward. Okay, so now this part here is going to be glued into this, the yellow fin unit. And we're not going to use the wood glue for this because we're gluing to plastic. Whenever we're gluing to plastic, we're going to use the plastic model cement or the uh, super glue. Um, but go ahead and just test fit it first. Make sure that it fits. Um, it doesn't matter where the engine hook is relative to the fins. I'll typically just line it up with one of the fins just to, you know, to make it look cool. Um, so again, here we're going to use plastic model cement. And basically the way this works is it actually melts the plastic. It's really not a good bond when we're, when we're, we're doing paper to plastic, but plastic to plastic, you know, that's in there permanent. So this is, you know, already dry. In this case, you know, if you had the choice, super glue would be better, but plastic model cement will work. Um, so just go ahead and just slide that in there. And again, I'm going to try to spin it around so that my hook is in line with one of the fins. And then push it in as far as it will go. It's going to stop. It's just going to be in there just like that. Now the engine hook should be able to still go up and down um, for this purpose, to put the engine in. Just like that. All right, we're moving right along here. Okay, our next step is to take the other green ring and we're going to glue it onto the forward tube like this. And again, now we're going, going paper to paper. So now we're going back to wood glue. My, my glue is drying here, so I had to wipe off the tip. Just like before, just put it on there and just smooth it out. Any excess, I'm going to take on my finger and put it on the inside of this ring. So we get a nice glue bond in there. All right, and then just slide it in. Come on. Like that. And this one we want flush with the end of the tube also. Just like that. Now our uh, green ring is dried. And now we get to glue it into the tube. And this is why I skipped ahead and painted the tube first. Um, this is going to be glued just like that. Um, this launch lug needs to go, this is important, it needs to go between any of two of the fins. So it's going to be just like that. Now we've got paper here, paper here. So that's going to say, let's use wood glue. Now this time, 
I'm not going to put hardly any wood glue onto the outside of this because when it gets shoved in, any glue on this is going to come out and then it's going to get on my nice painted tube. Um, so I just have a lot of glue on the inside there. Get this off of my finger. And we'll just slide it in. That's another little tip you can use is to keep your rocket nice and clean. Okay, so I have my launch lug right between the two fins. And we'll just let that dry like that. So this, this rocket's going together really fast. Our next step is to mount the shock cord. And the shock cord and this, the apprentice kit uses a Kevlar cord. Kevlar is six times stronger than steel and it's very fire resistant. So it makes a really good shock cord. Basically the purpose of this, um, it, it attaches the nose cone to the rocket so everything stays together. But we'll need to mount it and on the front page of the instruction sheet is the shock cord mount. So just go ahead and get a pair of scissors and just cut it out. Just like that. And what we're going to do is take the wood glue. And this gets kind of messy. So if you have a piece of plastic, go ahead and lay that on your table. I'll just lay a paper towel down for now. And smear glue onto that and smear it all the way across. And then take the shock cord and lay it on a diagonal across the mount like that. And then we're going to fold over just along these fold lines. Did it once and then you do it a second time. Like that. Now if you used a lot of glue, it's going to get all over your fingers, but it'll come off. And then we want to kind of give it a, a little bit of a curl. Um, the curl is because it's going to go on the inside of the tube like this. You can see now it's, it's curled a little bit better. And this is going to go into the tube. And when you put it into the tube, it's going to get glued. I'm going to test fit it first. Um, you want to take it on, put it on the tip of your finger and slide it in as far as your finger can reach. Um, purpose of this is we want to make sure that it's deep enough inside the tube that this shoulder doesn't get interfered with so that the shoulder of the nose cones can still go onto the tube. So it's got to be pretty deep inside there. Now, this is a pretty critical piece on the rocket because if this lets go, um, the nose cone is going to fly off and the tube is going to come down by itself and you're going to lose probably the nose cones because that's where the parachute is attached. So if you're doing this on the same day that you're launching, make sure that this glue is dried. Um, and then just a little tip there. I know a lot of people like to fly them the same day that they build them, but you need some time for your glue to dry. So now I have that um, glued inside there. And it's going to take the glue at least a good hour to dry. Um, but while that's in there, I can take the other end and we're going to tie it onto the nose cone. You'll see that there's a little loop in there. Just thread it through. This glue does, or these shock cord will fray on you, but that's okay. Okay, so I got it through. And then just go ahead and do a double knot here. Try to keep the end of the string as close to the uh, shoulder as you can so that you have, you know, you're not wasting shot cord that's hanging off doing nothing. So I have that double tied there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of glue because this is also a pretty critical joint in the rocket. We don't want this knot coming undone. So I'm going to take some glue and just work it into that knot. So that knot is never coming undone. So look at that. Okay. So now we have shot cord attached to both ends of the tube. So while the glue's drying here, I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the parachute. Now the parachute is pre-parented onto this plastic 
material here. Um, now you can cut this out with a with the scissors, or you can use a hobby knife. Either way will work. If you're using a hobby knife, make sure that whatever surface you're on um, isn't going to be marred by this. Um, I'm on a cutting mat here, so for me, a hobby knife is a little quicker because I can go zip, zip. And I'm not perfect, but that's okay. On your first rocket, you don't have to be perfect. All right. And then you're going to have these reinforcement rings here. And you just take one off and put it on each of the corners. You'll see that there's a an outline to put it on there. Okay, next I want to take our uh, shroud line. It's also called suspension line. This is for the parachute. And just take it out and unravel it so you get a nice long piece. Okay, we need to cut this into three equal parts. Um, so take one end in one hand, put, put it around your thumb like that, and in that other hand, reach down with your little finger and then reach over here and then pull straight. Oops, let go. Don't let go. All right. So I'm pretty close here. And what I'll do is I'm going to take my scissors and cut through one of them like that and then just match up all the ends like that. Now this end is probably not going to be perfect. You can see one is a little shorter, so I can just trim that. See, I'm only, I'm only off that much. I'm pretty good at this. Okay, so now I got three lines of equal length. Um, and then on your parachute, um, you can take a pencil or you could take a knife and poke through the plastic inside the holes like that. You can do all six of them. You can also do it, use it with a hobby knife. If you're using a hobby knife, I just cut a little X. Okay, and I'm gonna take my string and put it through here. And I'm going to do a double knot. So that's one knot. You can see I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the way I do this and, and how I recommend that you do it, especially with kids, to make sure that all the lines are equal, is to just to hold the tip of the short end and do all the tugging on the long end. So I just put my through and tug. So now I got a double knot there. And then just take this other end, loop it around to the next hole, and do the same thing. Okay, so on the second line, instead of going from this corner to this corner, what I want you to do is go from one end to the other. And I'll show you why in a little bit. In fact, I'm going to flip the parachute over. So now I'm going from far corner to far corner. And then we'll just do the last one. Okay, all my strings are on now. 
And the reason we went from this corner to this corner for the middle one was so that when we gather up all the lines like this, they will all lay flat there on your finger like that. Otherwise, if you went from corner to corner, it will still work. Um, it just means that one of the lines is going to have a twist in it, kind of like that. Um, I just prefer to have them all nice and flat like that. And then grab the middle of the parachute, pull, pull on the tip like that. And basically what we're looking for is all the, the lines in one little corner. So this makes sure that when we stretch them out, we know exactly where the middle is. And I can mark that. This is not that critical at this point, but I, I'll just show you. Okay, the, that's the middle of the lines. Okay, and then we're going to take our rocket tube, and I want to take this part here, and I also want to get it through that little hole. This is also a little tricky. Let's see how good I can do it. I'm going to kind of smush them together and make a point. I can see them coming through. There's one. Come on, little boy. There's two. And the third one, did he come with? Nope, he didn't come with. Okay. Okay, here's another little trick. Because that hole's really small, just take that shot cord like this, loop it, and then just gonna tie a knot. So what we have here, if you can see that, is a loop here with a hole in it, and I'm gonna just pass my shot cords or my shroud lines through that hole like that. And this basically does the same thing. It's just a place where we can get all the, the lines together and attach to the nose cone. Okay, and then I want to get that loop open. Okay. Just like that. And I'm going to take the tip of the parachute. I'm going to pass it through that hole. Remember, that's my middle. Hold that middle. And then pull on the strings like that. So now your parachute is attached to the nose cone by way of the shock cord. All right, so basically our, our model is now built. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to fold the parachute. Um, we don't want to just crumple a parachute. We want to actually fold it. So um, by folding it, it opens better than if it was all crumpled together. Um, so just lay it on the table, fold it in half once. And the instructions for this are in the in the manual there. Fold it again and then fold this corner so you get all the shroud lines, all the corners in one spot. Um, now you can continue folding it like this. Uh, one of the tricks that I like to do um, to make sure it opens really fast is just grab the shroud lines like this and just lay them on top and we're going to fold them inside. Okay. And on this rocket, you only want to fold lengthwise just one time. Um, if you do it more than that, there's a good chance that it's not going to open up as fully as you want. So there we have a nice little burrito of a shot cord or a parachute. And your shot cord, this is going to get stuffed inside. Um, there's also a recovery wadding that gets stuffed inside. Um, and we'll show you how to do that when we're going uh, getting ready to prep for flight. So once you get all the shot cords stuffed in, put the nose cone on top. Like that. All right. And then basically it's time to decorate. 
which is the fun part. Um, and for that, we have some stickers. Um, there's, you can put them on any way you want. They are die cut, so they will peel right off. Um, I usually like to take the apprentice sticker and put it on the opposite side of the launch lug uh, because the launch rod is usually on the back side, so this will be on the opposite side. Uh, so you can just put it down there, just smooth it down. These are stickers, so just have some fun with it. Uh, we have little uh, fireworks here. That's what all these are. You know, just put them where you want them. And basically, your rocket is now complete. Um, so the next time you see us, we'll, we'll go out and we'll launch this thing and we'll show you how to prep it, how to make the launch pad. Um, that's part of our starter set, if you bought the starter set. If it's just the apprentice, then uh, your apprentice is ready to launch. Let's go over assembly of the launch pad. Now the launch pad is pretty simple here. Um, we have the legs and the hub, and you just take the legs and slide them into the hub like this. And there you go. Um, now you're gonna need your launch rod. And um, I showed you how to assemble this in a different video. We'll just go ahead and replay that video on how to assemble the launch rod. Um, because I'm out here on the launch range and I don't have any concrete around me. So here's the video and then come on back. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Um, today I'm going to go over how to put together a launch rod. Uh, this is the Sky launch rod uh, that comes with the Sky starter set. Um, and it's three pieces and people have been wondering how to put it together. Um, if you look at it, um, two of the pieces have roll pins in the ends. And then the middle piece has two little holes, one on each end. Um, now these roll pins are really tight. And the reason for this is I don't want it coming apart. Because sometimes you lift up um, on your launch rod like this one here and it comes apart and that's kind of annoying. Um, I didn't plan that to happen, but I'm glad it did. Um, so when we specified this from the manufacturer, we wanted it to be real tight. Um, but to get them started, what you do is you have to get the end inside the hole. Um, and all, basically, that's all you need to do is to get it just started. Now, if it doesn't start on yours, there's two tricks you can try. The first one is take a pair of pliers and squeeze that roll pin. And you'll, it's, it's split down the side, and if you can squeeze it gently, um, sometimes that's enough to get it started. Um, you can also take uh, sandpaper or a, a metal file like this and just kind of go over the edge and just kind of round off that edge just enough so you can get it started in the hole. Okay, so as, as long as it's staying together like that, that's fine. Um, and then the trick is to just bounce it on the floor. And that's why I'm out here in our uh, atrium area here at Apogee today because I got the hard floor. Um, so you just bounce it. And this actually works better on concrete um, than linoleum. But uh, once you start bouncing it, um, it will go together. Okay, so that one's in. And then you just do the same thing to the other side. All right, and so there is how to put together a launch rod. Um, our launch rod is now assembled, and to put it on the pad, uh, we just stick it into the hole like this and just tighten up the thumb screw. And that takes care of that. And as you notice, you can adjust the angle of the launch rod. And for your first flight, I do recommend just putting it straight up. And the blast deflector, you have this little plastic piece here that kind of gives you a base to slide it over the launch rod like that. And then your rocket, when you set up your rocket, um, it will slide down the launch rod. So that's the pad. The controller is also pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> you have your long wire 
and the alligator clips on one end and there's a safety key that will go in here like this. When you're working around small children, I recommend that you put the key in your pocket so that they don't control it. To put the batteries in, just push your finger there to pop open the lid. It takes four AA batteries. Um, and you can see the orientation here in the bottom. Just make sure you have the polarity correct. And then put the, the lid back on, snap it shut. All right, now when you take the clips and put them together, and then you put the key in, you should get a red light in your uh, controller window. I'm not sure if you can see that here in the bright sunlight, but it's red. Um, that means you have a complete circuit. So if I were to take an igniter, and if you want to test igniter, go ahead and test an igniter. Just make sure that the, uh, the clips are uh, connected to the wires and that they're not touching each other so you don't have a short. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Again, I should have that red light. And then when I push the button, 3, 2, 1, launch, it should burn. Um, you could see the smoke coming out and it was red and it burned. So now this igniter is done. And so at this point, uh, we can go ahead and set up the launch range and we can also get our rocket prepped for flight. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about rocket motors. Now on your first rocket, uh, there's two basic types of motors and they come from different manufacturers. There's the Estes motor and the Quest motor. Um, the Quest motor has this white paper case and the Estes motor has a brown paper case. You'll see on one end is the nozzle and then on the other end is the ejection charge. Now the igniters are a little bit different too. Um, I'll go over the Quest igniter first. Um, it's a two wire igniter that has this little cap on it that protects the pyrogen. And to install it into the rocket motor you just slide it into the hole and then this is used to hold it into the rocket. Now what I find is that if you take a pair of scissors and then you just cut a little slit in the little tube, um, the tube will now curl on itself. And so when I put it, put the igniter in the nozzle and then take the uh, little tube, I can just slide it in and now it's really secure. And that's how you would hook up a Quest igniter and hold it into the, into the rocket. The Estes igniter looks a little different. It has a little pyrogen on the tip as before um, and it's used tape to hold the wires apart. Um, again you'll slide it into the nozzle like that and to hold it in Estes gives you these little plastic plugs and on the on the little tag it'll tell you what motors that you can use them with and this one says A8 or B4 and this is an A8 motor so this yellow plug is the one that I can use. Um, basically you'll just snap it off with your finger like that and if there's a little nub on it you just snap that off too because you just want it just like this. Oops. A little wind today blowing things around so that's what it looks like. Um, you always want to do this upside down. Um, you, you take your uh, rocket, uh, you put the igniter in it and then you just push the plug in and then these you push hard. Again, make sure that the wires aren't touching down here at the bottom by the nozzle. But I would wait until you get the motor into the rocket before installing the igniter on either the Quest or the Estes one. You always want to install your igniter very last. Um, so now we'll go ahead and prep the rocket. You're ready to prep your rocket for flight. Um, so I have my rocket here on the table. I'm out at the launch range uh, because I'm getting ready to launch. So first go ahead and pull everything out of the rocket and you want to inspect everything. Make sure that everything is still attached tightly. Tug on the end of the shock cord. Uh, tug on this end too where it's in the tube. So that looks good. I'm going to stick my rocket motor into the engine hook again. Make sure that the uh, nozzle is facing outward and just slide it in like that. Now 
uh, you're going to need recovery wadding and that's this uh, little paper here it looks like tissue but it's actually been impregnated with a chemical that makes it flame resistant and the wind is kind of blowing around right now but just take it and loosely crumple it up um, you're going to need two or three sheets slide it into the tube and then just take a dowel you can take a pencil works too just slide it all the way down to the bottom just push it in I'm going to do three sheets and this protects the parachute um, from getting melted from the heat of the rocket motor when an ejection charge pushes everything out okay so I have my shock cords already my parachutes right here and remember we always want to fold parachutes we don't want to just crumple them up and shove them in there um, so I got it folded fold it in half again and then bring these shroud lines all together so all your shroud lines are in one spot then I take the shroud lines lay them over the top of the parachute canopy like that I'm going to fold them inside fold it again and now I got kind of a, like a long wedge I'm going to fold that over once kind of roll it together and it's ready to go into the rocket now then the shock cord will also go inside put the nose cone on make sure that nothing's getting caught in the shoulder this is called the shoulder of the nose cone make sure that nothing is caught there and at this point, uh, we can put our igniter in because I'm ready to launch. And now my rocket is ready to go to the pad. And so now let's go to the pad and launch this thing. Okay, our, our launch pad is set up and we're ready to launch our rocket. So first of all, make sure that the area around the launch pad is free of anything that might burn. Um, and then make sure that there's all your spectators are aware that you're gonna be flying a rocket. Today, I'm kind of by myself. But uh, I'm sure when you go out to fly, you're going to have a lot of people with you. Um, always be careful of the launch rod tip. Um, it can poke you in the eye. So go ahead and slide the little rocket down the launch rod. And I'm going to make sure my, my, my pad is level, so I want to go straight up. And then I want to take my clips my wires, make sure that they're separate. And before I hook up anything, I wanna make sure that the key is out of the controller. And I'm gonna stretch out my wire. And I'm gonna put my wire through the leg of the launch pad so that as the rocket takes off, it can't pull the wires up into the air. Um, and then put the alligator clips on the wires and make sure that uh, that they're not touching each other or the metal blast deflector because you'll get a short and then the rocket won't take off. All right, so I'm gonna back up here and I wanna stretch out my wire as far as it will go. When you're stretching it out, make sure you're not pulling it off of the pad. All right, and I got a red light on my controller. I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, one, launch.